Ezekiel chapter 44. Then he brought me back to the way of the gate of the outward sanctuary, which looketh toward the east, and it was shut. Then said the Lord unto me, This gate shall be shut, it shall not be opened. Now this is the famous east gate over in Jerusalem. Uh, a couple times people tried to dynamite it open and failed. No man shall enter in by it. Because the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, the God of Israel, has entered in by it. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore it shall be shut. It is for the prince, the prince, not just the prince, the prince. He shall sit in it to eat bread before the Lord. That's David sitting before Jesus Christ. He shall enter by the way of the porch of that gate and shall go out by the way of the same. Then brought he me the way of the north gate before the house. And I looked, and behold, the, gate, the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord, and I fell on my face. Many times in the Bible where, where the glory of the Lord showed up, men hit the ground. And there's a copycat, there's a counterfeit among the Pentecostals, you know, falling on the ground and, and shaking like a fish out of water. That ain't the glory of the Lord, that's the, the, the semblance of the Satan and devils. It brings you down in your knees to worship. I've heard people say that, you know, they're going to go up my man Jesus. That's just foolish. Now, I, I got a thing here. I saw this. I, I almost passed by it. I thought it was quite. Verse 2. And this is Clark. Bring up his thing. This is Adam Clark's commentary on the Bible. In Ezekiel 44, verse 2. This verse has been adducted, adduced by the Roman Catholics to prove the perpetual vir virginity of the mother of our Lord. It may be allowed to be as much to the purpose as any other that this has been brought to prove the very precious point or precarious point on which no stress should ever be laid by any man. Mary was a virgin when she brought forth Jesus, but she had other children. And just how they just grab a verse. And you won't believe some of the verses that the Roman Catholic Church holds to their doctrines. It's foolish. And I don't know why they don't go verse 3 is the Mass, you know, eating bread, but back to verse 5. And the Lord said unto me, Son of man, mark well. Jeremiah said, Who has marked the word? Paul says to Timothy, Who has studied the word of God? Behold with thy eyes and hear with thine ears. All that I say unto thee concerning the ordinances of the house of the Lord. We began that in the previous chapter. The measurements of the altar and the sacrifices of the altar. All the laws thereof in the millennium. The law is coming back. And mark well the entering of, in the house. 
where every going forth of the sanctuary. So everything has their proper place. Everything has their proper way. And every way has their proper doing. Now shall say to the rebellious, even to the house of Israel, why they're in Babylon. Thus saith the Lord God, O ye house of Israel, let it suffice you of all your abominations. And that ye brought into my sanctuary strangers. There's your church. I mean, they call it the sanctuary. They call it the house of God. You brought strangers in. All are welcome. Bring them in. Bring them in. Bring them in from a world of sin. What happened to Jesus? Says, Go in all the world and preach the gospel. How can you bring the loss into the church when the church is only that which is saved? So Isaiah 44, 7 is your typical Baptist church and your Catholic Baptist church. Bring the strangers, put on your sign, boy. All are welcome. And guys, you, you brought strangers in. Strangers for Israel are people who are not Israelites. Strangers today would be people who are not Christians. Uncircumcised in heart, they're unclean. Bring all your ways. Bring your rock and roll. Bring your dancing girl. Bring in your your uh, uh, your bingo. Bring in your sweet steaks. Bring in your hot dogs. Bring in your car washes. Bring in your parties. Bring in your food. Bring in your chicken. Bring in everything to bring everybody in, so we can mark on our attendance record. That our preacher can go tell other preachers, we had X amount of people. That's what it's all about. Because if it was truly about lost souls, you'd be out there every day of the week trying to win lost people, regardless of coming to church. There are Christians, Christians that go to church Sunday morning, and will have an alcohol drink an hour after the service. They will get in their car and light up their, their tobacco sticks. I, I've done it. I ain't preaching to the choir. I'm preaching to me. I have seen church, exiting churches. I've seen Bibles fly off hoods, fly off the roof of the car, fly off the trunk. I've seen Bibles sit in the back seat of the car and not open to the next church touch. And I told that to him. And he goes, yeah, I've seen Bibles fly off cars. Uncircumcised in flesh for the Jew, that's the foreskin. That's that covenant that God made with Abraham. That would mean there are Jews who are not to the Abraham uh, covenant by the, by the circumcision, which they were out. They were cut off. That would be also Gentiles. What was it, the, the king that had the, the boil in Isaiah? Duh, he said, the men of Babylon came in. Isaiah said, well, what did they see? They saw everything, including everything. Well, they had to go in the temple to see it. Or you brought it out of the temple to show them. And then there are probably Jews who are not circumcised. And they're, you know, I think it was Timothy or Silas. Paul had circumcised, not because of the law, but because Jews, they were witnessing the Jews and circumcision of Jews was a very important thing, and you have, you have to do right. That'd be like going, if I sat down at a restaurant and I was going to eat with a bunch of Jewish people, I would not order pork. I would order something that would agree with the law. Because they're unsaved, they're under the law still. I would not offend them. I had another pastor one time, I don't care what it is, I would order whatever I wanted to order. Yeah, you're a fool. And the Bible says it's sting from all appearance of evil. 
to be in my sanctuary. Well, there it is. The Baptists say, oh, welcome to the church house. Well, aren't we glad to be in the house of God, in God's sanctuary? Ezekiel 44, 7. You got strangers here. You got uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, okay, you Baptist Catholic. Peter says, all oh, those of Babylon that greet you. Hey, that's us. Yeah, that's us, Catholic Church. That's a Pope. Yay. Mystery Babylon, Revelation. Oh, no, 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 that's not us. Don't you tag the Pope and the Catholic Church to that Babylon. You see, the Baptists are doing the Catholic thing. There are even Baptists out there that believe Good Friday in three days. I don't know how you do it. Maybe with a broken uh, calculator at the bottom of the ocean. And Sunday, Jesus Christ arose on Friday. You should Baptist Catholic. To pollute it. They polluted the temple with their sins. The Baptists, I don't care about the Catholics. I don't care about the Lutheran churches. I don't care about the Jehovah Witness. I care. Uh, I'm partial of Baptists. I'm talking about my breed of people. And you have polluted the services. And when I go witnessing and I tell people about Jesus, one of the things I say, well, I know the church. I know a pastor. I know a Christian. Yeah, I know. So do I. I'm sorry. Even my house. See the, see the Baptist? I was in a church down in South in Florida. Every Sunday, welcome to the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord. Like, you're the only house of the Lord. Everybody all over the world has to come to your house. You say, that, that, Stolly, come on. That preacher went to our street ministry here in Daytona Beach, was mad. I didn't preach his church. I didn't tell him about his church. And I said, well, what about if I met somebody from Alabama? Am I supposed to tell him about your church? You see, like the Jews, all over the world, they're supposed to come, to, you know, every Sunday service to your church. The law said three times a year. The Baptists say 52 weeks of the year. Our church. Our church. And then we run to the law in Malachi. Oh, tithing, tithing. I'll tell you what that tithing is. I, I've studied it. That's the pastor who doesn't have enough faith in God. He's got to brag to people. He's got to bribe the people. He's got to divorce the people. He's got to scream at the people. He's got to preach at the people to bring money because he's afraid he ain't going to pay his bills. When you offer my bread, Malachi said they thought the table was contemptible. They, oh, we're doing it again. Oh, got to do what the Lord wants us to do. The fat and the blood. They have broken my covenant because of all your abomination. Sin breaks. You got a filthy, dirty, sinning church. You ain't doing nothing for God. Jesus Christ, the Bible says, is standing outside your church, knocking on the door. The invitation is outside the church door, not in the church at the altar. And you have not kept the charge of my holy thing as prescribed by the law. This is why they're in Babylon. This is why we're in the light of the singing church day. The church has not kept the holy things of God. What's the holy thing? The Holy King James 1611 Bible. They allow other perverted devil satanic Bibles in. They allow the use of phones. I've seen people in a service and they're on their phone. The phone rings. I've seen kids playing games on their phones.
I've seen even Christians don't even bring a Bible and don't even pick up the Bible that the church offers them. But you have set keepers of my charge in my sanctuary for yourselves. What's that verse? You're in the church service not for God but for yourself. Boy, is that a lot of Baptist churches. There are people in the Baptist church for their own personal gain, for their own personal way. Come on, if, if you stepped in any, I don't know what the odds are for the, for the Baptist church, and you looked at their deacons to what the Bible says a deacon's supposed to be like, how much of the deacons in the Baptist churches will match the biblical qualification for the deacon? I bet you they couldn't even know where the places of the deacons are. And their wives. Well, he's my friend. I've known him many, 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 many years. Yeah, Jesus knew Satan many, many, many years and Satan's going to hell. And his angels. Who style, you're being kind of harsh. I'm not being harsh enough. Thus saith the Lord God, no stranger, no all are welcome. Uncircumcised in heart means you have not repented, you have not confessed your sin, you are not seeking God. Paul says those people who are not to the doctrine, who are not living correct, you're the anaphanite, you're not to have anything to do with it. That man was having sexual relations with his father's wife, kick him out, put him in the, the sight of the devil. Nor am circumcised in flesh. We're not under th anything of, cir of circumcision. This is Jewish. I'm also spiritually applying. Shall enter into my sanctuary. <laughs> so what do you do with all our welcome? Of any stranger that is among the children of Israel. Now strangers, Gentiles were allowed to be in the congregation of Israel if they chose. But they were restricted from the temple. Even the, the, the temple that Jesus was in, there was a certain part of that temple for the women. Oh, well, it's prejudice and all. I don't care what you say it is. It's, you take it up with God. And God will be right. There is division from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22. Genesis 1, he divided the light from the darkness. Revelation 22, he says, Liars, whoremongers, and all them will have their part in the lake of fire that burns forever. There's no division in the Baptist church. And the Levites are gone away from me. That's sad. And that's Christians too, called backsliding. It happens. When Israel went astray, when Israel sinned against God, so did the priest. Hey, they're leaving, so am I. Which went astray away from me after their idols. Baseball, football, American Idol, television, Republican, guns, hobbies, sleep. They shall even bear their iniquity. You got an iniquity, you got an idol in your heart, Christian? You're gonna bear the iniquity. You better confess. You better repent. Yet they shall be ministers in my sanctuary. The Levites are coming back and they're going to do what they're supposed to do. Having charge at the gates of the house. 
What was their charge at the gates? You're unclean. You're not allowed in there. You're a Gentile. You're not allowed to go in there. Well, your, your sign out there says all are welcome. Uh, 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 uh. You may be a Christian, but shacking up with somebody who's not your wife or not your husband. No, no, no. Can't get, get that out of here. Abstain from all appearance of evil. You're going to be open your sins. There are people, people at the gate called ushers saying, you're not allowed here. Well, I'm going to get, you keep your tithes, you keep your money, and you go get right with God. That's why I don't have a church. People wouldn't be able to hear my messages. I've tried to start churches. And ministering to the house. It doesn't say anything about the lawns. What's the house? The care and take of the house, the cleaning of the house, make sure the bread is out at the proper time, make sure the water is filled, make sure the, the wicks on, on the lamps are trimmed, make sure there's no hole in the veils, make sure everything's going orderly, orderly and properly, make sure the, the fire is still. Listen, that wasn't going on in the time of Samuel. Samuel, he goes to sleep and the fire of the Lord went out. Bible says in air. That's wrong. One of the kings go in there and he has he has the temple all cleaned up and they just happen now to find the book of the law. It was there the whole time. Why didn't anybody else find it? They shall slay the burnt offerings and sacrifice for the people. And they shall stand before them to minister unto them. Make sure everything's orderly. Make sure everything's done properly. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. What offering you bring? I'm bringing the peace offering. That's not the correct one. This is what you're supposed to bring. Sir, the line for this is over there. You're in the wrong line. And make sure they're open up. Make sure in proper time. Make sure that lamb in the morning, the old lady, the under the old, now there was the goat. To make sure the, the lamb in the morning or the goat in at night has been offered the proper times. There was no room for Jesus because it was one of the feasts. So you better make sure the priest makes sure that one of the three times and all three times of the year, you better make sure the city of Jerusalem is ready to receive all the people and do what they need and get everybody to do what they're supposed to be. Don't you come up short. It's so funny that, you know, these churches, they, they come up short on God, but they think they're doing so great. They think they're so wonderful. And the very fact is, Revelation says, you say you're rich, you say you're wonderful, you say you're great. And God says, you're wretched, poor, miserable, blind, and I'm standing outside the door. And lock. Because they minister unto them before their idols. And their, Jeremiah tells us there were idols in the temple. And on every street corner. And caused the house of Israel to fall. Like Genesis 3. Into iniquity. Therefore have I lifted up my hand against them. I am angry with you. Well, you know, welcome to welcome to the Easter. One of the two times that people come to church, invite people to our Easter service, and God says, "Uh, -huh. get that star out of my house, or I'm leaving." That's why Jesus is outside the door, because Esther is in the Baptist churches. Jesus said, "All right, fine, you keep Satan. I'm at the back door." Anybody want to come out? Yes, Lord, style he does. I want to come out of that mess. Come on out. But Lord, they don't want to be my friend. They don't like what I say. They don't want to. That's okay. You just want to tell them what, what they do. And you and I can have sweet fellowship. 
Except for there's one thing I'm lacking in the Lord right now, and I keep praying the Lord, keep praying the Lord. I pray He'll answer. And then he comes the second time. We're going to bring Tamus in. Ah, you're going to bring Tamus in? I'm stepping out. Well, we're going to have a great revival. Oh, no, you're not. You see the world's revival, the Christian revival today. Oh, we want Donald Trump back. We want our freedoms. We want to do, and we want to do everything outside the Bible and outside of Jesus Christ. Just let us do what we want to do, and we'll come to God when we want him. God's like, goodbye. Jesus, where are you going? Going to the back door. Slam. I lay, I lifted up my hand against them, saith the Lord God, and they shall bear their iniquity. Run that back to idols. What do you do with the Roman Catholic Church? Who earlier said that verse, that's to show the perpetual virginity of uh, Mary. Uh, idols, statues, statue of Mary, Mary with her heart sticking out, Mary in the half shell, Mary in your front yard, Mary at, the, at, at every Catholic church is an idol, and the Bible says it's iniquity. It's an aid of worship. In the devil's left eyeball. And they shall not come near unto me. Did you, did you read the second commandment about God saying to those that worship and make images and idols. You don't come to God by your rosary. You don't come to God by your crucifix. You don't come to God by the old rugged cross. I will cherish and hold the old rugged cross. I hope you get a sliver. Because we're not here to cherish the cross. We're here to cherish Jesus Christ who died on the cross. You don't even know where the cross is today, but I know where Jesus is. They got wherever that guy is. They, they got a big old rugged cross as a monument. You mean like the idiot that built the ark in, in Tennessee or Kentucky? Idols? Cash, check, or money order, you can come and see all of us in idolatry. And God says this is iniquity, and God says, I'm not in it. And you thought the Catholic Church was the bad one. No, the Baptist Catholics are the worst. Because they're supposed to know better. They have the Bible. They have the King, oh, they got rid of the King James Bible. Uh-huh. You see, the King James Bible can't understand it. Yeah, I can understand the King James Bible. It writes about my sins, and I don't want to hear about my sins. So I'll water it down. They shall not come near unto me to do the office of the priest unto me. Now they'll say, well, you know, we're not... But you run over the revelation and said, we shall be priests and kings. And you say, hey, that's us. And then you run to a verse like this in spirit. Well, that's not us. That's Old Testament. I don't read the Old Testament. That's boring. I offer up prayers for, for people. Prayers is incense. There's only one group of people that can go in the holy place and offer up that incense that one king tried, and he got leprosy and was put into a several house. And even, even his grave, he was separate. Nor come near to any of my holy things. I got a holy King James Bible. I believe the King James Bible is the only holy word of God. I believe it's that, that, that six and six, twelve loaves of bread on the table. Being lit by the word of God, by the candlestick. By offering the prayers of the incense just over in the most holy place. 
I believe that modern Bibles, anything but the King James Bible, is moldy, crusty, old, crappy bread that God says, throw it out to the mice. You better believe I'm only King James. In the most holy place. That is where the veil is. That is the veil that ripped. That's where the mercy seat is. That's where the cherubims are. That's where the ark is. Only one went into that most holy place. Twice. And once a year. For his sins. And for the sins of the people. And my Jesus went in that veil once, once with the blood. And I don't sacrifice him every day. I don't sacrifice him every week like the Catholics do. Once. But they shall bear their shame. Unconfessed sin is going to produce shame at the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment. Well, my pastor said, the radio preacher, the street, the, 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 the television evangelist, that good old woman who's not supposed to be preaching told me, the daily bread, the moldy crap. My perverted modern version told me, that's not, it's a shame. I don't even open my Bible. That's a shame. And the abominations which they have committed. You ain't going to get away from sin unless it's under the blood. But I will make them keepers of the charge of the house. They get to the keep. It's a job. In the millennium, there will be Levites, and we'll read about it in a moment, Zadok. They will be put in the charge like the law prescribed in the millennium. And all the services thereof, and there was much service to be done. And every service had, you had to be a Levite. Then you had to be of the children of the Levite. And a particular child of the Levites had a particular position in that. The children of Asaph weren't the ones that burnt the offering. They were the ones that brought the singing. Well, I want to do this. I, I, I didn't want to be born in this. You were born where you were born by God and you do what God wants you to do by the position that God wants you to do and you do not step out of that position. Many Christians, I'm a light. No, you're supposed to be a preacher. You're supposed to go in all the world and preach the gospel. Well, I, I, I'm, an, I'm, an, I'm an inviter. I invite people to church. Chapter and verse, please. You give me the chapter and verse in the book. You won't. You can't. But the priests and the Levites, the sons of Zadok, that keep the charge of my sanctuary, when the children of Israel went astray from me. So Zadok's family, Zadok, the Levitical priesthood, remained faithful. And God said, hey, you know what? i got a great job for you. You know what God will do for the Christian if you remain faithful? Well, you know, people... They fell away. My family fell away. My Christian is at church fell away. But if you remain faithful, God will reward you with crowns and inheritance. Come near to minister unto me. And they shall stand before me to offer. And when they say, it means to stand offer. Not only God as a spirit. When they stand before Jesus Christ to offer. Unto me the fat and the blood. Say if the Lord God. I mean can you imagine as a priest. You're in the temple. 
Hey, Jesus, how's it going? Good morning, sir. Are we doing everything correct here? Thank you, Lord. You have a good day, Lord Jesus. Thank you for saving us. Have a good day. Now, that's the sons of Zadok. I'm well pleased with them. And every Christian has crowns in, in New Jerusalem. And when we cast our crowns at him, that's what we do. I'm well pleased with him. Well pleased with that one. And that one that don't have crowns. Well, they could have done it. They didn't lose their salvation. There's two Levites there. But there was nothing like the Levites of Zadok. Thou shalt enter into my sanctuary. And they shall come near to my table. You mean like the Last Supper? To minister unto me. Somebody had to put that bread out. Somebody had to put that wine out. Somebody had to lay the cups out. Somebody had to prepare that meal. Jesus, when he said to the disciples, said, here's this man. He's got a large upper room. Go and furnish and prepare the Passover. Because I want to eat the Passover with, with my disciples before I die. There's a service. There's a ministry. They shall keep my charge. Wherever God orders, they'll do it. Servant to Jesus. Glory to God.